Folks, welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. We are doing it all over again this week. This is a pop culture roundup, and I have one of my favorite people with me here today. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, it looks like I'm in a bunker somewhere, and that's because the there was a complete Wi-Fi cable outage on a Sunday morning. And now it looks like it's not going to be fixed until 7, which is going to affect my Love Island USA finale viewing. So I am at a 10 right now. And our guest was so kind to like wait all of this time. It's been hours now since we were supposed to record. And But good, the good news, nothing crazy has happened on Sunday yet. There's been no breaking news at all with anything. But let's get into the pop culture stories of the week with one of my favorite people. You know her, you love her from the account at IG Famous by Dana. Dana Omari, welcome back to the show. Hi, excited to be oh, here. <laughs> I love having you on because it's always so easy uh, talking with you and I always have the most fun. And that's why I was like, is God uh, putting things in my way of having a good time? Because it was going to be so easy to wake up and roll out of bed and just podcast with you. Um, <laughs> how the heck are you doing? Are you good? Yeah, I'm doing really well. You're right. Absolutely no news this Sunday. No, um, no but news. in your bunker... <laughs> Um, this is why we need more bars that are for Bravo. I just, I can't believe that it's not a thing. It, why why don't we get to have our own Bravo bars? Well, it, we we kind of teased Carl Radke about having a non-alc bar. He was dreaming of opening a non-alcoholic bar. But what if, like, I've said this for years. I've made so many memes about it of, like, saving the movie theaters by showing classic Real Housewives or Vanderpump or Summer House episodes at your local AMC theater. Like, imagine watching like Scandaval at an AMC theater. And to your point, imagine a local sports bar with no sports, but just Bravo or reality TV. That, that's the dream. I mean, I have done watch parties at local bars around here. And when I tell you that they're always surprised, like all these people are coming in for this because it's usually, you know, male bar owners. And they're like, are we going to at least be able to show the Astros game on three TVs? I'm like, there's not enough TVs, okay? There's, there's only 20 TVs <laughs> and we need them all for Vanderpump. And they're so shocked at just how many people come in. And it's usually the most amount of women that come to the, any sports bar at any given time, which then all these guys that are usually there are like, what, why are all these girls here? What's happening? This is fun. And so, yeah, there should be a Bravo bar. I met my husband. I, I met my husband at a Vanderpump rules watch party. That is, it's like target, like go where the girls are. <laughs> Well, also the bars could also incorporate, like they could have like three booths in the background that are soundproof for podcasters. Like you could just <laughs> like do live podcasting. The This isn't a bad idea, Dana, but by the way, Dana is full of great ideas. And I do want to point out, I'm not allowed to drop the news yet, but make sure you're following at IG famous by Dana, because Tuesday there is kind of a major announcement that that is, I just heard it and it's really flipping cool. And I think you guys are going to freak out. So make sure you're going to drop that. Are you teasing about Tuesday? Or you just, I mean, are you going to, are you going to tease this out or Tuesday? It. Tuesday, I'm going to announce it. It's going to be something that's just going to be really fun for my followers. So I'm really excited. Uh, Dana is going to be uh, Kamala's vice president pick at the, uh, the democratic national convention. That's the big news. No, they told me that today. Actually, I wasn't <laughs> supposed to tell anyone. I know. Yeah. You're like, you know what? I can do this podcast, this one and only podcast. And then I've got to go back to work for the American <laughs> people. Um, <laughs> And by the way, so speaking of, this was huge news that just dropped today, Sunday, uh, and I think we're all talking about it, and I'm very, I mean, it blows me away, but this is the headline, uh, Ben Affleck wasn't in attendance at Jennifer Lopez's Bridgerton-themed birthday party. Wow, that is wow. huge news, Dana. Can you imagine yeah. that? I, I mean, was Jennifer Garner there? That's what <laughs> I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, every one of Ben Affleck's exes was there, but Ben wasn't. Um, but it is kind of crazy. She did have this Bridgerton themed party. She went overseas. She's like photographed this weekend on Twitter, living her best life, all of these kind of sexy photos. And we're still getting, I love like People Magazine, Daily Mail, TMZ. They're still doing like Ring Watch 2024 of Ben Affleck was wearing the ring today. Ben Affleck wasn't wearing the ring today. As a woman, Dana, how do you go about like, what does this all mean? What Da Vinci code are we supposed to take this? It could it just be he's lazy with his jewelry. That's how I feel. If he were a guy that was always like wearing jewelry and really accessorizing, you know, if it was like Harry Styles, I'd be like, he did that on purpose. He looked at all of his jewelry and said, no, not today. <laughs> but, <laughs> but Ben Affleck, I well, probably forgets. And he's like, oh shit, my ring. Yeah. But it's just so funny at this point, like just, 
keep the ring on, take the ring off. I'm just tired of hearing about the damn ring because obviously they are not together, especially if your husband doesn't show up to your Bridgerton themed birthday party. <laughs> I mean, what were what were the reports like? Did people say like we were looking for him, he wasn't there? Did she say something? Like I, I She didn't say anything. It was just Ben Affleck reported as not being there. But this is like hot on the heels of them putting their $68 million mansion up on like up for sale. They moved out, even though like no official announcements were made, but we have like helicopter shots of all Ben Affleck's crap laying on the driveway with like moving vans there. So at this point we all know, and I just wonder what they're truly, are they just waiting for us to just officially not care anymore? I don't know, but I just want to know what they would possibly break up over at this point. Like, what are they breaking up over? It can't possibly be like a cheating scandal. Like it seems like Ben Affleck doesn't care about that either. You know, maybe (laughs) They got into a fight over Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm tired of you using the intense Boston accent when you don't really speak with a Boston accent in normal yeah. times. I just, I, what, what could they possibly fight about like that? You know, they both are insanely wealthy. They both have kids that they seem to co-parent with their exes pretty well. Like, I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong, but Ben Affleck doesn't strike me as like a womanizer, like now in, in his age. Like, I, I just feel like he's just like, yeah, well, lying. well, Dana, Dana, never, never count men out. We, they could, he, I he mean, just, he could he be like a human. He doesn't womanizer. care about anything, but it could, that could be the problem. Maybe he doesn't care about anything. Well, I mean, I love the fan fiction people write about all celebrities, including this, is that a lot of people said, oh, Jennifer Lopez is fame hungry. She's scared about losing fame. We hear this a lot with Katy Perry now as well, as she launched her new single Woman's World. But I find that narrative interesting as well. But I always think of it also from a, uh, a standpoint of like normal people imagine being with this person almost getting married the first time it not happening and then decades later they come together and it's this fairy tale romance that i remind people that this started because of madison madison from southern charm uh getting in the dms with uh, alex rodriguez who was mm-hmm. then with jennifer lopez so there's a bravo connection but i do wonder if they both kind of you know, we get really bummed about sometimes our history or our past loves or past relationships. I do wonder if they're both kind of like, oh shit, we thought this was going to work out. We're so embarrassed. Heart, like They've got to have those normal feelings like we do. No, I agree. And I feel like those relationships don't work out. Like if they didn't work out the first time, they're not going to the second time unless they have really made changes. And I don't know. I don't know if they have changed at all. JLo seems like she's exactly the same person that she's always been, which is fine. She's yeah, amazingly super talented. She's a superstar. But yeah, I don't know. It kind of seems like it was, I don't want to be alone. This is comfortable. <laughs> comfortable. This is comfortable, right? I This is familiar. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I think also you, you know, probably if you were them, you think about how beautiful of a narrative that is of after all this time, us coming back together. And it really like they probably were swept away in the romance of that as well. And then a year or two passes because they just celebrated their second wedding anniversary. You have to come back to reality of and also the fact is, this is why I always say, be careful what you wish for in terms of uh, fame is it's not all it's cracked up to be like, if you know, Jennifer or anybody trying to hold on to fame. That's something that is so impossible to do decade after decade. And she's done so good so far. But I imagine losing sometimes your grip on that can really affect other relationships. And by the way, for both of them, I think he's a workaholic as well. But I think it's interesting just when we think about our own relationships. Yeah, no, I the thing is, is I don't think she'll ever not be famous, but I think that she's in this place where she doesn't know how to navigate not being like the person like an a-list star like i think she's dropping maybe from being an a-list maybe she's on that way like when oh, we see like her dana dana did you just drop her to a b-list celebrity no, I, on I, the like, pod on the way because like her her shows aren't selling out her movies are does i even I was making a joke with someone i was like who's even financing these movies anymore because they're all of her movies are so bad um like recent movies and then i found out she was financing it herself and i was like oh well the yeah the amazon movies she paid for herself and i think she made the money back because they bought it from her but at the same time she was like universally roasted for those movies but then her other movies she's kind of switched to netflix and netflix is a great place to like call a home in a sense because you don't pay attention to it like you do with like box office figures for movies that are in theaters 
So they get watched a lot because, you know, sometimes you'll just have something on and then it'll automatically play a movie that you didn't ask to watch. But right. a lot of people will just sit there and watch and Netflix movies, like whether it be The Rock or Jennifer Lopez, they're not my favorite type of movies, but it's a great way to earn your paycheck. Sometimes the movies, and I'm being kind here, are really lacking. Yeah, no, um, for sure. I don't like complete silence. And so sometimes when I'm working or if I'm, even when I'm reading, I will just have something on on Netflix. And I'm usually like, oh no, that looks interesting. Say that to my list. I'm not going to watch that right now because I'm not going to pay attention. Yeah. But her movies are definitely one of the background ones for me, you know? <laughs> it's just J-Lo's in the background as you're doing your important work out there. Um, the other thing I think is funny with Netflix is they always have that thing that comes on like you know, once you binge something for six watching? hours. Yeah. Are you still watching? It's like, of course. Let me know. I'll let you know when I'm not watching. Yeah, like, it, trust me, I'm still off. watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was just making a horrible dad joke about the, the Ben Affleck news, even though that's true. But the big news today was that uh, Joe Biden has uh, stepped down in running for the reelection in 2024 on the Democratic ticket, and he has fully endorsed Kamala Harris. And now this isn't a political podcast, but I want to, as I always try to do, let you know that I am aware. And what I've been telling you guys is that this is part of what I was saying, that this is going to get crazier and crazier. We had an assassination attempt last week. We have this this week. It's going to get nuts before no November. Oh yeah, there there's been even more. Like um Matt Gates like revealed his new Botox face and Biden <laughs> I was gonna... it. It's like been Shondaland over here. But what really is Shonda the bad part is that everyone is screaming at Biden and I, I will say I'm liberal, like whatever my followers know. Um, screaming at Biden to step down and all it took was George Clooney saying something. Like apparently we just uh, the... need George Clooney to give the <laughs> announcement for the people. Like, what do the people want? Tell George Clooney he will get it done. <laughs> The power of Hollywood. And I, I mean, I'm trying to be gentle here, but it is funny that the presidential like race, I'm, I'm talking both sides, Democrat and Republican, it is truly like a housewife season. Like if you were watching a housewife season of this, you would be like, oh my God, this is the best season ever. It's so dramatic. It's crazy. It's sick. But this is actually our so real life. Kind. So it's, it's scary like as hell. Mirror. It's like Black Mirror. Well, but, <laughs> yes. I mean, it's black. It totally, it's, it is black mirror, but I just want to tell you guys, uh, we'll try to help you disassociate as much as you can this next couple of months. But if you care about things, get involved. Uh, you know, that's the only thing, you know, you do matter. You do have a voice. And also, uh, this is not a popular sentiment. Um, is that try not to, and my dad always says this, don't hate. I think our first, our first reaction is to come down swinging really hard on both sides. And it's really, I think, a dangerous thing that really makes us hate each other. And that's what this is meant to do is divide us. And we've got to try to find those commonalities. And I know this is cookie cutter of me to say, but just remember that because you're going to have times where you get heated and angry. And the only person to get angry at and to be obscenely angry with is Tom Sandoval. That's like, can we all make that promise? But I was going to say also, like, I feel like this is very hypocritical of you, Ryan, because I, you basically inspired me to buy this book about all the things I hate or whatever that your friend printed, which is amazing, by the way. Oh, yeah. The yeah. The things I hate journal. Uh, and you're telling me that I'm not supposed to hate. I don't know. Seems fake. So <laughs> listen, listen, I, I think the hating, it's great on housewives. It's great on that. But when we have to live with each other. And by the way, this is me trying to be my best self because, yeah, you guys all know I'm like kicking things and throwing things like when I'm off mic. So this is the trance where I try to get to encourage being normal. So Good luck, everybody. We'll be here with you through the next couple of months. And I think I'm as scared as anybody. Um, but yeah, so let's get on to the insanity. And what I just mentioned was Tom Sandoval. Yeah. And this man, Dana, we already came off a Scandoval season. And this week, we had some insane things happen where he sued Ariana, deactivated his Instagram account along with his girlfriend, Victoria Lee Robinson, and then the next day came back on Instagram to let us know that this was a huge mistake. And I'll read his statement in a second, but what did you think of all of this? It, I mean, this is class. I mean, this was like, oh my God, are you guys filming this? This is insane. I, so I don't know anything about his attorney and I'm really wanting to know how that conversation went. So I, I would like to believe that the attorney was like, I don't think this is the best idea. And he's like, she's making all that money and she's doing that and that. And, you know, I'm not the one 
that sent the, the video to her or the screenshot to her, she used my phone. Like, I'm going to, like, I feel like that's the conversation that was had. And then when there was backlash, she was like, oh, guys, he didn't explain to me that it wasn't actually suing, that I was actually suing Ariana. I think it was supposed to be something else. And I was just confused. It was a mistake. I'm so sorry. I'm like, what? Either you have an incompetent lawyer or you're, you, or you're not paying attention when he's telling you or she's telling you things. I don't know who his lawyer is. <laughs> and if you look at history, I don't think this man pays attention to a lot. Like it seems like he pays attention to all the right things that involve like being a celebrity, but he's just it's like he doesn't have the handbook for these things. So it's just weirdly I, I would just think at this point. The thing is, like, I, I made this point the other day is that this man keeps getting helped by everybody. They put yeah. him on the next season of Traders. They gave him a sympathetic edit on this last season of Vanderpump. And every time somebody tries to help him, he it's almost like he's like, oh, fuck that, dude. I'm going to make a statement that's insane. And he completely throws all of these people under the bus. And if it wasn't real, you would be dying laughing because it's just like, dude, can you help yourself? Yeah, I, I just have no idea what he was thinking. Like I said, either his attorney's incompetent or he's just like, no, I want to do that. And the attorney's like, okay, well, you know, you are paying me whatever you are for this. Because I, I just can't imagine him thinking that that was a good idea. Well, honestly, the entire lawsuit, like um, even Rachel suing them, none of that makes sense to me. I feel like, and listen, this is going to be really difficult because I'm actually more <laughs> on the side of, of Rachel than I am of Sandoval. Me but too. Like, I think that it is a gross conflation to say that it's revenge porn because an image was moved from one phone to another. I feel like the intention of revenge porn is to out someone, embarrass someone, hurt someone, shame someone. Whereas it seems what, from the best of my knowledge, Ariana just wanted proof that this man was cheating on her, you know? Which, and I which by the way, would be kind of normal if you were yeah. in Ariana's shoes, correct? No, I that's 100% what I would do. I wouldn't even be thinking about it being revenge porn. It would be revenge porn if I then posted it and was like, look at this skank. But so I just feel like it's a very gross conflation with actual revenge porn because the intention was not to shame either Sandoval or Rachel for being sexual beings. The intention was here's proof for when I need to you know, get whatever from the house when I need whatever like that, you know, that he's at fault, whatever it is. Well, like, he couldn't he talk his way out of that. He couldn't say this didn't happen. We yeah. have videotaped evidence that it did happen with his probably little FaceTime square of him being like, oh, dude, you look so hot right now, dude. Yeah. Right. Like we have that insanity. And by the way, you know, that that was videoed over at like Schwartz's like shitty apartment in the Valley because that was his like whack off. Sorry to be foul guys, but that was his place where he went and did that. So it is wild. But your point is, is exactly right. Is that revenge porn also is one of those things. If they leaked that online. If all of a sudden, or they made some distribution deal with a porn company, like uh, think about like Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson's videotape or Paris Hilton's videotape, right. or even Kim and Ray J, those things were leaked allegedly and made a lot of money from, and we have not seen one leak of this FaceTime video. Think about how many leaks we have in Bravo or entertainment, pop culture at large, or even the political system. This has not been seen by anybody. And everybody that I have talked to behind the scenes say they have never seen it. They have never. And, and listen, I get people could lie about those things, but I will say it is shocking that if this really was being passed around, that nobody has leaked it. And by the way, at this point, I'm scared Sandoval is going to leak it just to like make some money eventually because it seems like he's so hard up for money. Yeah, but at this point, does anyone want to see it? Like, if oh, we God, were no. like on that level, maybe last year, like you, last like, year, you would now, I'm like last I'm so year. over this. I cannot believe we're still talking about this. <laughs> I know. By the way, this is. I was watching Dana. I was watching the first season of Vanderpump because I'm covering it over on the Patreon, and it was wild to think this was 2013 when this show started, and I legitimately was like, oh my God, it's like. It's like, sir, was this place like the island and lost where it traps everybody and it never lets the, and by the way, we're now on that island. We, we will never be able to escape. Scandaball will never be able to escape these people. We've made them all famous and I dearly love the show, but you're right. We'll never, there, and the thing is this, to my point about Tom, he can't just let things die. Like, because it wasn't only this, you guys, then yesterday, 
because Kristen Doty and Luke, her boyfriend, have a podcast called Balancing Act. And I really like those guys. I've been on that show a couple times and vice versa. They've been really great to me. Uh, and they uh, they take my jokes in in good good humor, as, as anyone should. But they said on that, or Kristen said that Tom Sandoval reached out to see if he could come on their podcast to talk about a very specific issue, which was probably this issue. And Kristen said on the podcast that this is not the forum for that. And mm. Luke was on that podcast as well. And then Tom Sandoval went on his little IG, which he had reactivated. And this is where I just think, man, you cannot help yourself. He says, Really, Kristen Doty? I had the audacity? I know this really didn't come from Luke minutes after I made a statement. By the way, always have love for Luke. And there's a screenshot that Luke had texted Tom Sandoval that says, Hey, man, Kristen and I are just about to record a podcast coming out later today. Saw your post, and Kristen says we're going to talk about it. Would you like to call in or say anything else about the whole ordeal? For the record, I told her that it's probably a lawyer move to separate him from Ariana in dumb Rachel lawsuit. So this got thrown out there yesterday. And once again, Tom could have just said nothing. In what way does this change anything? What way does this... Are we all like, oh... Oh my God, we owe this guy a huge apology for the last two years. Like, does this change yeah. anything for you to hear that? I mean, I actually think it's worse. Um, <laughs> and like, I did see that with like Luke saying that he thinks it was just like to separate. And I asked my friend who's a lawyer and she was like, no, you wouldn't separate because it's a civil suit. You wouldn't separate yourself by then suing this other person. What you would do is you would ask the judge, you would file a motion for the, the suits to be separate. And to the best of my knowledge and what she said, she's not really into Vanderpump. She was like, it looks like they're being sued separately anyway. Like she's not yeah. that Rachel has a lawsuit against Sandoval and another one against Ariana. Right. Yeah. I thought it was something to my understanding and I'm sure the Bravo docket or somebody like Emily D Baker will cover this uh, more intelligently than I can. But it was one of those things. If, you know, Rachel, if Tom is dismissed from that, or if, if they end up actually getting sued together, I, that that they could that Tom could then go after Ariana if Ariana was dismissed from the suit. It was very confusing to me, and I, I really still don't fully understand it. But in Tom's statement, he says, "My lawyer Matt Garagoth, who with advice I trusted, called me about the cross complaint in the lawsuit. He assured me that the action was customary and strictly preventative in these types of lawsuits, and a girt and." The words new lawsuit or suing were not articulated to me. I should have done my due diligence on the matter. He has then said he removed Matt Garagos from his legal team. The action against Ariana brought on my behalf is being removed. I had no ill will or vindictiveness towards Ariana. Now by removing both the cross complaint and the attorney who recommended it, I hope to get through this case quickly so that Ariana and I can both finally move on with our lives. He capitalized <laughs> move on. So that was the statement. And that, if you really break it down piece by piece, is another idiotic statement because you obviously didn't file the uh, fire the law firm that he rep that Matt Garagos runs. Right. You didn't fire that. Also, Matt Garagos is the brother of Mark Garagos, who was representing Rachel in the first lawsuit. <laughs> yeah, no, I just I have no idea what's going on with that. But then also Rachel and her team are messing up legally. Um, her PR person is going to go on Rachel's podcast and talk about the lawsuit since Rachel can't. So I don't know what is wrong with these people. I don't know what's wrong with Tom, what's wrong with Rachel. Ariana seems like the only one who has been like zip mom, you know, yes, just but... filing it through her, her, her lawyer and letting her, her person who is specialized in, in this type of work to handle take it. Care of it and handle it. Right. And not like we, she's not speaking about it. Not once have I seen her make any kind of statement. I know. Isn't that, and to me, that is a place of power is like the yes. people that don't speak. You let all these people run themselves ragged, bad mouthing, suing, doing whatever. And by the way, let's not take away the fact that I'm sure it would anger the F out of me if I have to spend my good hard earned love Island hosting money on defending myself against bullshit about this man that he created. I would be livid, but these other people are treating like it's an actual Vanderpump rules season. Like yeah. I, I saw that thing about, um, uh, Rachel's publicist. And I just, sometimes I almost wish that we as an audience would keep our mouths shut and just, because I think now that the PR person obviously is paying attention to everybody saying that and probably will 
put the kibosh on that or hold back. Whereas before, if we didn't point out how ridiculous it is, her PR person talking about the lawsuit on Rachel's podcast, she would have hung herself. It would have been able to be used against her in a really bad way. But I feel like we tipped them off. And by the way, I think so Rachel's PR person listens person to this talking show. to her lawyer. You would think that her lawyer would be like every single person that is putting anything out about you publicly that you're paying like needs to go through legal. I mean, when I do like a brand thing for like sunscreen and I have to like, you know, write out what I'm about to say, it goes through their legal team. Like, yeah. and that's for like, Oh, like make sure that you don't say anything inaccurate about sunscreen, you know? But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So sunscreen is actually definitely way more organized than anybody involved in any of these proceedings. But it really is interesting. Except and it's for this Ariana, thing. obviously. Ariana listened. They Ariana. said, don't say anything or you might lose a lot of money. And she said, got it done. I will well, talk to myself if I need to. <laughs> but my thing too, if you bring it back to the show, this was already a show that was on pause so everybody could chill out. This really, like every time, like a month has gone by, everybody's try starting to chill, starting to try to get back to normal. And then when these things happen, it reopens that wound. And I'm now at a place of like, I was fully like, this show is definitely coming back. And I still think it will come back in a different form, but it'll come back. But now I'm like, really, why would you be around this dude on filming at any point? He keeps making these moves that make it really hard for this gang of natural friends to come together and hang out with each other. And I don't think the onus should be on Ariana to leave the show. Why does she deserve to have a pay an easy paycheck taken away from her? Because this dude is creepy to hang out with. Yeah, but also she's outgrown the show. She's off already to she, bigger and yes. better things. So like, this is a natural progression for her. But I mean, come on, even Sheena kind. I mean, she said she's she's done with him. I mean, you know, Sheena flip flops. But for now, she's <laughs> like, I can. I now see that I was being stupid, and I will never do it again. I, well, by the way, Tom gave. See, that's Tom gave Sheena an easy layup there. When you do something that stupid, then Sheena has like every, like, she's like, oh, good. I get to fully come out against Tom Sandoval. And even Tom Sandoval will be like, oh, yeah, dude, I totally get it. Uh, I was a completely idiot move. Uh, yeah. right. um, I will say the Ariana nightmare, though, continues because it's not just Tom and Rachel. Um, Ariana and Katie are both being sued by chef Penny Davidi as she accuses Vanderpump Rules stars of reneging on agreement and non-payment for their sandwich shop. Something about her reality bur blurb is, uh, is posting this. Now this were, was from documents on July 18th and Penny filed saying she was the COO director of culinary and that she was promised a 10% partnership for helping develop the menu with something about her and operate the restaurant. And she said she worked hard. Penny even filed the trademarks for Ariana and Katie's company. And she was supposed to be paid $7,500 a month until January for assisting them in the May opening of the eatery. She uh, then claimed she agreed with Ariana and Katie that her monthly income would be raised to $10,000 a month after January. Um, so this is another lawsuit that they are going to have to deal with. Now, something about her is open, opening opened, and it's been really successful so far, but you have this person who we saw on last season of Vanderpump rules a couple of times. And I just feel like, man, is, I, I don't understand if this is just somebody hoping that they'll settle out of court. If they really want 10% stake in this, because I said from the beginning, this is like an easily franchised sandwich shop that you could e immediately see it in Vegas at a casino immediately. So I don't know. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's, it could be everywhere. Um, but I don't, I read about this when it was first filed and then, you know, a little bit more of the details are coming out, but I, I just really don't understand it because I, again, Ariana is not saying anything. I don't think Katie said anything, but like what actually happened? Like, did she stop working? Did she like, I, I just am not like, well, clear. I mean, that's what I, I don't think we've really heard the other side, which is Katie and Ariana. And I will say I would be shocked if, uh, I mean, nothing was actually put in writing. I think that was the other thing. There was a contract wasn't signed, but you have to wonder why Lisa Vanderpump has been so quiet about something about her. We still don't have any video or photo of Lisa visiting something about her. And remember, Chef Penny is Lisa's uh, a coworker of Lisa's, and I think a friend as well. And you kind of have to wonder where Lisa is in all of this, because Lisa is the one that introduced Chef Penny to these girls and obviously didn't it badly. But I also love that we're sitting here 
kind of not knowing the full story. It's nice to it's nice to have people not completely airing out everybody's dirty business online. Well, it's absolutely the smart thing to do. If you're ever sued, if anything's going on, you do not say anything. <laughs> you know, you let it, you go through the courts because especially if, if you start talking, you might even give away like where your lawyer, your attorney is going, like, you know, the direction that they want to attack or remediate this, you know? And yeah. Like to bring it back, because I don't know that much about this case, but to bring it back to like the Rachel Sandoval, Ariana thing, I'm starting to wonder if Rachel, if at this point, if she doesn't really care so much about winning, but was wanting to win in the court of public opinion, like, you know, kind of make her like, she's definitely the victim because this was a revenge porn case. Like she did not consent. This is non-consensual. And, um, by her. PR person, like her PR person is coming in. It sounds like her PR person wants to make some sort of story or narrative around it. Because otherwise, why else would she be willing to answer questions about the case, which would be absolutely detrimental to the case? You know? I mean, and, like, and by the way, that's what PR. and that's what PR does, though, is that they try to create a narrative. They try right. to create a story, and usually that story is this person's so amazing because this, this, and this. This person you should empathize this, this, and this, this person is a hero because this and this and this, and you have to understand and this isn't conspiratorial. This is just how PR works. We are being fed stories nonstop. And it. it's really like which story works, which story doesn't, what story is testing. Well, you can even take that right into politics, which you're seeing a lot of this week, but it is interesting when somebody comes out this hard. And this is why I always think it was such a mistake for Rachel to sign up with Bethany's reality reckoning because it really took her own narrative. I feel like it took the power away from her own narrative and also assured that she would not work in reality television again, because at this point she said on her podcast a couple weeks ago that she would be interested in going on the trader someday. I'm like, good luck. That's an NBC universal thing. Why would yeah. anybody allow you back on reality television when you have said the things that you've said? And I'm not saying that she isn't right about some of the things she says, but it is a business and you also want to protect your business. These are corporations and they don't mess around. Well, the thing with her and Bethany is that I don't even think she so much has said things. I think she let Bethany speak for her through Bethany's lens. And I had posted a thing like at the end of the day, we still didn't get to hear Rachel's story. We heard Bethany's story exactly. just in another version. And so I don't even think that Rachel intended or meant what what ended up what ended up coming out, I think was just Bethany. Bethany's story. And Rachel did not intend to do any of that. I think she just really was like, guys, like he manipulated me. And it's like, yeah, he did. But now yes. you also um, are technically accusing Andy Cohen, NBC Universal, Vanderpump. The producers uh, of Vanderpump. You know, the set decorator. I don't know. Everyone at this point. No, I mean, I, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, the, the, thank God uh, Rachel hasn't taken up one of Bethany's habits of just eating cottage cheese with her mouth open entirely. That oh my be, God. Thank that's God that awesome. hasn't happened. Are you sure we're not in like one of the circles of hell? Because like with oh this God. like election cycle, like all the things going on and then Bethany just always eating and eating so aggressively. Why? We Is it where she eats? Like, we don't care. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, did you see that she, uh, last week, I think she said she was going on a date. She got ready for the date, then got in the car, saw the guy outside of wherever they were meeting and he misrepresented how he looked. So she left. She ghosted him. And I was like, this is incredible. I mean, Bethany lives in a house. Like everybody's like, some people are like, oh, I miss Bethany on Housewives. I'm like, you shouldn't. She's giving you a full Housewives season without other characters on her TikTok every day. It's just that I sometimes, it's like watching somebody's slow descent into madness. No, like I absolutely know, and I promise I'll stop bringing up politics after this. I, I now how, know how Trump and Biden became like who they are. We just missed the signs earlier because I feel like that's where Bethany is. This like level of delusion and grandeur and like <laughs> thinking of her ability is yeah. Like, it's e ego and it. ego and pride. Ego and pride will mess you up every time. Like I've <laughs> always did. I've always disliked myself. I've always hated myself, and I think that's proof. <laughs> you had a decent I, level of shame. <laughs> <laughs> All I am is shame. So I think I've already gotten that game. <laughs> I've heard so many bad things about myself the last year, and I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's. Yeah, man. Okay, cool. Um, but you're completely right. And Bethany's one of those people that now, when she like, she was posting with Jill Zarin last week, and I was like, 
it, it just rings so false because we all know how much shit she's talked about Jill Zarin over the years. But it's it's not even like two friends coming together. It's two corporations coming together, hoping to get a little piece of the attention economy. Right. And we're supposed to get excited about that. And I think what happens is that we're so we're so smart now as an audience. We're sometimes so discerning that we see through that and it doesn't give us the good vibes as it once would. Even the Countess Luann Bethany thing. At first I was like, oh, that's really nice to see them taking a picture in the Hamptons. But then the next day they both came out swinging and I was like, of course, of course. Yeah. Well, it's because in the early days of Real Housewives, we didn't have social media the way that we do it. We have it now. And so we hear entirely too much from Bethany. Like there are things like, maybe you think it, we don't say it. <laughs> Bethany doesn't know how to do that. And I keep thinking about her stuff with Chanel. Her like, <laughs> my favorite part is after she begged and begged for like attention and free product or whatever, like from Chanel. And then she was like, oh, everyone's looking up Chanel. Like, they should pay me because I, like, gave them marketing. And they're like, girl, Chanel doesn't need you to market. And, in fact, you have now become, like, the poster person for who they do not want to walk into a Chanel store. And <laughs> the, in her, like, the Lulu is like, I am now basically the Chanel spokesperson. Do you know how if you go to, like, certain, like, like a convenience store or something, you'll go to the cash register and they'll, like, you know, like you'll see the employees have like these signs of like, if you see this man, don't let him in again. He's still like twixes. Not allowed in. Yes. Every Chanel, every Chanel store, there's a big picture of Bethany looking, Bethany eating crab legs with like all greasy. And it's like, do not let this lady in and please call security <laughs> if she approaches the door. <laughs> Literally, no, it has to be like, they just have like her Polaroid of her and they're like, do not let in under any circumstances, not even in like a danger, like <laughs> extreme situation. <laughs> Don't oh, care. What's so, what's so interesting, Dana, though, and this is, I guess, interesting about life as well, is that we see this in a very clear, certain way. And I also see it in a way that also where I'm like, Bethany did such great things for housewives. What a legend in terms of a housewife. And also a legend in terms of being able to really convert her business, Skinny Girl, into a real huge entity that was financially profitable for so many people involved. But then... I see it so clearly now what it's all the stuff that we were just talking about, but she still has, I mean, it would be ignorant to say that she doesn't have a huge fan base still. I was reading her TikTok comments and everybody's like, Oh, go girl. You're the funniest. And I'm like, I, I just, I want to know how you get to that level of thinking as opposed to where I am, because sometimes I would love to be what the kids use the word Delulu. I would love to live in that Delulu where I think it's fascinating to watch Bethany scarf down ramen on camera. I don't know. I just did a video about Kylie Jenner crying. I know it was from a month ago. Oh, on the Kardashians episode? Yes. And um, like there were so many people that were like, I feel so bad for her. This is so heartbreaking. And I was like, what? Did we watch the same clip? Did we? I'm, I'm not sure that we watched the same clip. Like, let's roll yeah. it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, just to the PR stories. PR stories work. You know, it's like, you know, and it's, it's, it's an easy layup for some people because I think those people have genuinely good hearts. So they'll take that and go, somebody's crying. That is really sad. And we're judging it by 20 years of history of the Kardashians. We're yeah. judging it by, oh, they've created all of these beauty standards. Uh, one more thing about Bethany Frankel before we move on is, uh, remember, Bethany Frankel's ex, Paul Burnin, was dating Aurora Culpo of the Culpo family for a hot minute. And she just, Aurora Culpo, uh, uh, set the record straight on the barely filtered podcast. And she said, usually I always like to keep the men in my life anonymous. Unfortunately, because Paul told Bethany that he was breaking up with me. And then Bethany then went on her podcast and leaked it and then gave her reason behind our breakup. It put me in a position to have to respond. I would have preferred it to go longer, but unfortunately he dumped me. The next day he calls me and says, it's not working. I was disappointed. It never feels good to be broken up with. It's a bruise to your ego. And then she went on, it's not a good look to announce the breakup of your ex-boyfriend with his new girlfriend. It's not your story to tell, but she did. Um, well, there's, I mean, just another, there's another example of Bethany telling someone else's story. So <laughs> just chalk it up one, into, one, yeah, one, typical. Story. And like normally, and, and also you have to imagine this Paul is probably, I know I'm putting a narrative on him, but probably scared shitless of Bethany. Like, honestly, like, like, why would you tell this woman anything at this point? Because it, it's all content. Yeah, I don't even know why he's talking to her besides the co-parenting thing, right? Is that her? Is that the father? 
No, oh, that's not guys. the father. That's Jay, Jason. Oh, never mind. Is never mind. Yeah, oh, Jason Hoffman. Okay. This is like uh, the guy that she's been engaged to. He's really behind the scenes, so it's interesting to finally start hearing publicly about him. And Bethany uh, told said that they separated mutually, uh, and it was the right thing to do. But if it was the right thing to do, you gotta let you gotta let this guy. You know, you gotta let the the wings. You gotta let him fly. You know. Yeah, no, then she definitely, they have no reason to be talking about his new relationship or end of it at all. If that's, yeah, I forgot even who her, her father, the father <laughs> of her child was. That's how, I used to love Bethany. Listen, like very, very much loved you. She was my favorite. I was like, oh, she's not like these other New York women. Like she's so, she started from the bottom. She really worked her way up. And then after all that, like after she got off and just some the desperate bids to get back on while bad mouthing other housewives, other um, franchises, um, Andy Cohen and the network itself, after all of that, and then still begging to be on and then having her Housewives podcast, I was like, oh, this is cringe. Was she like that before? Did I just not see it? Or did this did this like extreme part of her personality develop because of being so popular and famous? And then just like JLo went from A-list to maybe dropping, she went from C-list <laughs> to like dropping to D-list. She's like, I can't be on D-list. But the thing is, Dana, is that like if this was like my my, and I know I'm wrong now, but when I started all of this, I used to think if you could be rich and famous, everything would be amazing. Your whole life would be amazing. And the reality is, most people just say if you're rich, that's what you want to be. Famous, fame is not good. Fame puts you out there in weird ways. It might help you get a table at a restaurant, but being rich is really where it's at. You don't need the fame. Now here's Bethany, who is rich, but then we find out that it wasn't about being wealthy. It was about the fame. That's the fascinating thing was that I always thought like, well, you get wealthy and then you're able to not, you don't have to go on Instagram anymore. You can look, you don't have to post anything. You don't have to put anything out there because you, you, you landed what you were initially hoping for. And now I realize, oh, she just, she wants the fame. Yeah. A lot of them do. I, again, going back to what I posted today about Kylie, I was saying they have so much money that they could just disappear like the Olsons did. Like, I know that they still work in fashion. I get it. But they disappeared and they are probably living the most amazing, incredible life. And they don't have to worry about who's commenting what on their pictures. Um, we feel so lucky and blessed when we get like a little sneak peek of them, like in an alleyway, like finishing off a cigarette really quick. We're like, oh my God, we got to see an Olsen for like two seconds. <laughs> amazing. It's like and a Bigfoot sighting. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, that's amazing. That would be ideal. Like people still know who you are, but you're you're famous, but like now you're a legend and we don't even know if you exist anymore. You're a unicorn. Yeah, exactly. Before we get to Love Island, one more housewife story here. Over at Real Housewives of Potomac, Giselle Bryant and Robin Dixon, you know, they have a podcast called Reasonably Shady. Well, Eminem sued them <laughs> because he feels like he owns Shady. Like Shady is him. Like, you know, like, you know, Slim Shady, that's him. So he took them to court to get them to stop using this name in their podcast. And Eminem just won a little piece of the, the court battle because they were trying to depose Eminem to have to come in and testify. Like this is actually going forward. And Eminem believes that his brand would be damaged if the women are allowed to continue to monetize off this podcast. And it would also cause confusion I mean, I don't think I've ever tuned into the Reasonably Shady podcast hoping to hear Eminem, but he thinks that it will confuse people. And uh, the the judge ruled that he does not have to come to court in this uh, trademark lawsuit to do a deposition. So he does not have to be deposed. So that's the one victory now. But just like we were talking about with Ariana, I would be, and you know Robin's got to be pissed about having to spend money to defend a podcast name. Yeah, um, I I hate to say it, I agree with the women on this. Um, like, because I I'm not a fan of them. Like, I'm so over Robin. I, she's so boring. And she doesn't bring anything anymore except she she does have some shadiness. So it's actually a perfectly well, named podcast. Or she's not on Potomac, but she actually yeah. is on the next season of the Traders. They gave her that. Yeah, but she's just for the last little bit. She's been giving nothing except for like pathetic in terms of wine. Like, oh my god. But shady, like the word shady, that is such a mainstream, typical, just adjective that everyone uses. It doesn't make any sense for that to be like reasonably shady. That's in no way does that make me think Eminem or Slim Shady. Like if they 
if they have some sort of like take on slim shady, big shady, skinny shady, or something, you know, closer, maybe, but just the word shady, come on. It, it's like when Kylie Jenner was like trying to trademark Kylie and was going to, and Kylie Minogue was like, excuse me, I'm the OG. Yeah, and I yeah. I was here first, so you cannot trademark that. She didn't even try to trademark it for herself, thankfully, because, you know, Kylie Minogue is queen. But she was like, you can't just trademark a basic name. I don't mean basic, basic, but that's yeah. just like, oh, I'm going to trademark John. No one can <laughs> use that on anything. No more John Hancocks. No more nothing. No John. Like, why? That's so stupid. Well, yeah, like if Robin and Giselle, if they named their podcast Marshall Mathers, the podcast, <laughs> I would say that Eminem, like, oh, I understand why Eminem would sue, but yeah, like there was never, in fact, the, when this lawsuit happened, that was the first time I thought about Eminem in regards to Real Housewives of Potomac at all. And I was like, it's so weird. And this is, once again, this is the theme of the whole episode, ego and pride is like, what kind of cute, and I like Eminem, but what kind of ego do you have that you think people would genuinely be confused that Reasonably Shady has something to do with you or that it literally and especially because reasonably shady like the word shady. if i were the lawyer i'd be like your honor shady is colloquial for you know talking shit and that's what they do all day on their podcast and they're saying that they're being pretty reasonable what they're talking shit and that's what their podcast is about and yeah. okay. rest my case <laughs> okay moving on now let's get to love island usa we are just hours away from the finale of what i think the sixth season was a, an amazing season so yes it doubled the screening audience. It was number one in cable programming last week. Everything's coming up Love Island USA. And I understand a lot of you guys still aren't watching, but don't worry. Season seven will come. We'll all get on board together. But I think this was a fantastic season. We have our final four couples. We let go of two couples over the weekend, uh, Kayla and Aaron and uh, Rob. Rob. And I'm uh, blanking on uh, the bombshell. He's had like eight, eight girlfriends on this show. It doesn't matter. But our final four are, uh, we have Leah. Michelle and Serena, we have Leah and Michelle, we have Kendall and Nicole, and we have, who am I uh, leaving out here? Did you oh, say? Uh, Janae and Kenny. Janae and Kenny. Yeah. So I, those are our final four. Who, who do you think is going to take it? I think it might be Janae and Kenny, but I love Leah. Leah is my favorite person on the whole show, the entire show. She's my favorite. <laughs> I've noticed everybody does. And by the way, Leah, uh, this weekend was the first Love Island USA cast member to hit 1 million Instagram followers, which is insane from where she started to getting this. It reminds me of Gypsy Rose Blanchard after she came out of prison and she immediately jumped to like 7 million Instagram followers. And uh, Leah seems to be everybody's favorite. I was thinking that Cordell and Serena were going to take it all. But you think, you think Janae and Kenny. I, I don't know, maybe I'm being biased because I just really, 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 really love them. Um, do you love them or do you love Janae? I love Janae. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. But I, yeah, do you, and well, and I guess in terms of voting, it doesn't matter. Guys if you're are always for the right reason. It's like Vanderpump. Like the girls are always like doing these awesome things and they're so interesting. And then there's the guys. And yeah, we even Kenny's had a just coming along for the ride. Kenny and like yeah. Janae is, and by the way, go to uh, Dana's Instagram this week. She did a whole thing. I've talked about this before with Janae's nose job, which she's actually talked openly about, and she was very proud of it. And my God, you should be proud of it because she wasn't bad looking before, but it was a it made her look completely different. I mean, I'm talking completely. What is the like? She went uh, overseas to get it done, right? Yeah, she went to a Turkish Turkish surgeon. And she let him post and everything. So, I mean, she's very open about it. And she has always been literally so gorgeous and beautiful. But it it's been years ago, it. right? This this happened yeah. years ago? Yeah. 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 I think it was maybe 2019 or 2020, I think. Um, I don't know. I posted it. Um, so, I guess I could check and see. <laughs> no, I just, I, I, I think it's so interesting because, you know, we, we talk and you've talked to me before about little tweaks and upkeep on your face and your body and all of these things. This is a, this is not a tweak. This is a, com it makes her look completely different. And I just find it so interesting how we do view faces in this world and how it does change your perception or how you're perceived by people. And I think Janae, and this is why Janae is kind of brilliant is that she realized that as well. She was always the same person. If you watch those videos, 
before. She was like confident, secure, all of this stuff, but she knew. And also Janae is the person when um, uh, Hakeem was on here a couple of weeks ago, he was saying that Janae went in having watched every season of Love Island, knew the game backwards and forwards. And I thought, this is a person, man. She She's out... She's, I mean, there to find love, but she's also working on a couple of different levels that she could be playing a game game, which would be kind of cool to see as well. Yeah. I mean, let's put her on more shows. She and Leah, like Leah just, Leah is, well, to quote Katie, who thinks that Schwartz is a serial killer's wet dream. Leah is, I think, a producer's wet dream because she is just enough like grounded and level and like has some self-awareness with just the perfect amount of like delusional and like funny. And even like when they were doing their little, um, what is it? The heartbeat, the heart race thing. Like she, oh, she yeah, yeah. Probably knew like, I can't twerk. Some of these girls are way better twerkers. So what can I do? And she came out with all those one liners zingers that were so clever and funny. She knew how to do that. And I feel like the same with Janae. She obviously studied, she preps, so she's very, very intelligent, which shows on the show anyway. And she, she, I think you could throw her in almost any show, and I think she would do really well because she's so smart. Yeah, I think Love Island, though, and I, I love it for this. I think it really is a show to highlight female, high, sorry, highlight women, uh, highlight women, because it really does. I think we're rooting for these these friendships that the girls have created, that they all like kind of root for each other in a sense, even though Nicole looked like she wasn't that happy when Janae got picked for the final four. We, we saw a really quick where Nicole didn't look really excited, but she could have just been bummed that Kayla was leaving. Who knows? But for the most part, they all hug each other and support each other. And they seem like they have this beautiful sisterhood. And I think that's exciting because on the other hand, you have the men who are fun and funny, but it shows how dumb we are as men and how we always make the same mistakes and we fall into the same repetitious pattern. And that gets tiring after a while. But when you see these women supporting, the, the only confusion is why these women came back to these guys after Casa in any sort of way, but whatever. Right? It's, well, it's, that's playing the game though, right? You can't, you can't have too much of a moral ground there if you want to stay on the show. Well, that you got to. Well, that's it to the PR point. You got to tell a story. You got to tell a story, and that's the story that it, we're trying to tell. Is that this love connection? Now, Leah is with Miguel. They made the final four. Rob left, and this is interesting in time, terms of pushing narratives. They really still are clinging to this Rob and Leah, even though Rob, like he's been with every woman, it seems like on Love Island. He seems like he gets bored really quickly, and even they had this very touching moment that I could tell everybody probably loved when. Hold Leah aside at the end, and he's like, "I really like you. Uh, I just like you know, you're funny. We're gonna have a friendship for a long time." And it almost took me back to old like Ross and Rachel days on Friends, like you know, before you know, like initially when it aired, where you're yeah. like, "Will they? Won't they?" And I thought it was interesting, and I almost wondered if the producers were like, "Okay, Rob, we're giving you 30 minutes to get out of the villa, but I'm sorry, you have to talk to Leah. You gotta pull her. You gotta pull her for a chat." You got to pull her for the last chat. Like, I want to know, because if I was a producer, I would make sure that moment happened because that's been so much of the discourse out there. Yeah. And especially because they pretty much agree that they were better off as friends. You know, there was like some closure yeah. there. They, they didn't say like, oh, you know, maybe things have been different. It was like, no, like it's, just hanging out with you has been cool. Like, that was great. Yeah. And but then Dana, he went, he went on After Sun, that talk show afterwards. And he was kind of like, well, you never know. You never know. He's yeah, like, because, it probably wouldn't work out long term, but you never know. Well, because his real relationship is with Aaron, we have another Sandoval <laughs> Schwartz situation here. Anyway. By the way, they do need to, they need to like run Schwartz and Sandys at this point, Rob and Aaron. Well, Aaron and Kaler, I think, blew it big time, or, or Aaron blew it big time for Kaler because going into Casa, I was kind of rooting for them. They were the one that actually had kind of decided they liked each other. And Aaron did all of his stuff in Casa, but then came and was kind of indignant about it all and kind of was like, you don't understand context. You don't understand. Like, you kind of like shushed it away. When you weren't there, I forgot about you. I'm like a baby. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean, forgot about her immediately, like in the first two minutes of being in Casa, started like making out immediately. And he was, he, he was having the time of his life. And I, I feel they had some of the parents come on to talk to the, the, the Islanders. And it was hysterical because Kaler's, Kaler's parents, they were kind of like, you know, Hey girl, I uh, hope you're making the right call. And she, Kayla's mom even went crazier, I think, on Facebook posting 
in regards to it. She was kind of attentive in opposed to the show, but like obviously they have their concerns with Kaylor being with Aaron. What do you think the over under on this relationship surviving is? Well, the fact that his object permanence lasted about two seconds, I think as soon as they're off the show that they're going to be broken up. Like as soon as we get, if we, are we getting a reunion with this? I, I don't think it was planned, but I think it's been so popular that they probably will have a reunion. And I do want to make a so bad it's good announcement is that I will be talking to all uh, uh, all couples in the final four tomorrow. I will be having them all on the show. And oh I am God, very Kelly, I love excited. her. Yeah, by the way, let me know. What, 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 should I, what should I be asking these people? What are the what are the big pressing questions? And it kind of sucks. I mean, it's great, but it kind of sucks I have to do them together, like as like a guy and a girl, because you kind of like uh, you know you gotta you gotta kind of be nice to both of them when some of them you're like ah. And then I asked to talk to Kayla and Aaron, so we'll see if that happens. Rob is doing call her daddy, of course, so yeah. he probably I won't be able to talk to for a minute. And and but I don't know. I, I'm so. I mean, I watched every episode. It was a great summer series. Yeah, we finally beat the UK. Like, fine, because it's always oh, been Love Island UK is way better. This, this, we finally did it. Dana, I got to tell you, I, I, I gave up on Love Island UK. Like, I, I was watching. I watched probably like twenty episodes, and then it was like, obviously, I was going crazy watching so much Love Island. And then it was kind of like the storylines were better on Love Island USA, but it's never been that way. It's never been like that before. Never, ever. This is the first time ever that, and I've watched every single UK. The UK was my favorite. Also, just their accents and like, you're so fit and like, can't play for a chat. Like, just the way yeah. they talk. Just, I love it. And I'm, gutted. Like, I'm, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. Well, I think they make the Love Island every USA. Day. That's the question I want to ask. I want to ask the Love Island USA contestants if the producers give them vocabulary lessons about what they say in the UK, because I've noticed, especially Nicole and Janae will say Love Island UK kind of phrases and terms. And I'm like, that's not an American term. Where did you get that? Like, obviously you've been watching Love Island. Yeah. Well, Janae, we know she watched all of it. So maybe it just like got imprinted in her. But well, I mean, no matter who wins at the end of the day, we're the real winners because we've had a decent season of television to kind of help us out after the hump of like, you know, summer house and Vanderpump, uh, you know? Yeah. Well, also Ariana is the winner too, because she's been such an incredible host, but also I now think that every host of a show needs to be a fan, not like a fan, like a regular person, but like a celebrity already. Totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. It's, it's different, and I think I get more excited watching knowing that she's a fan and knowing the ins and outs of the game. And also, it personalizes it where she, it feels like she has skin in the game. Like, she really yeah. cares. Because some yeah. of the time, you don't, like, after, like, 30 seasons of Ryan Seacrest on American Idol, I don't think he gives a rip about any of the contestants, you know? Yeah, he's probably, like, they're giving him a cue card right before, and he's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hug the one in the green dress. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay, <laughs> another, another over the rainbow. Here we go. Right. Here we go. <laughs> Um, so Love Island USA, great. I, I can't wait to see them coming out of the villa. And, you know, imagine Leah coming out and realizing she has a million followers on Instagram. And I was looking at Leah's Instagram last night. And it is funny, like before she went in the villa, did you look at this, uh, Dana, where it's like she was doing like subtle face tuning? Because it's like not, it's like, it's Leah, obviously, and she's beautiful, but she's not like, I think she's beautiful as is. And she was doing that init, like that face tune with the face where it looks slightly not like them at all. And I was like, oh my God, you don't have to do this. We've all not seen you for a month and a half. Do you I see mean, like you can down? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Um, but all of them are very done on the show. So like, Janae <laughs> isn't the only one that has, has work done. But yeah. And a few of them I was seeing that they pretty, they face tuned. <laughs> you just made a face. I, I mean, I followed her, but obviously she hasn't been posting. So I have not seen anything, you know? Yeah. It's, it's I, crazy. This is amazing. Maybe I'll, oh no, I, I want her to love me. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, oh my God. No, I can't wait. Starts, I can't I can't wait. wait. No, Am I making I'm, her mind up though? <laughs> I'm really excited to talk to Leah, but Miguel will be there. And so then I can't like, Hey, what are the over under on you hooking up with? Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Look at that. The face is like that subtle face to me thing. You know, I love her so much though. But see, I think, I think that her personality is what makes her prettier, you know? Uh, 
Like, I, I mean, I think she's pretty, but I think it's her personality. She's funny. I like, I like her deal. Like she has a more baritone voice now. She'll be like, Rob, like I, I can't, but like, it's like, it's really, and she'll just make these crazy memeable faces where when she reacts to something, it's really funny, but it's really exciting to see people like, you know, who they really love, who they actually go towards. I think it's really interesting. And everybody seems to be going towards Leah. So it's a public vote. So that way, if that's the case, Leah would have the odds on favor to win. I personally voted for Serena and Cordell just because I thought they had a better story. Uh, I yeah. the last couple of weeks from season five. And he was telling me like about the story, you know, did they, were they challenged at all in their relationship? And so if you're voting for Leah and Miguel, I feel like you're really voting for Leah because yeah. I think the story was like this fairy tale story in any sort of way. No, it wasn't a fairy tale story at all. We're definitely voting for Madam president and, <laughs> you know her first husband <laughs> uh okay do you have a uh, do you have 10 more minutes are you good still yeah i have, I have okay. some time okay so um uh moving on from love island usa and don't worry guys we'll be talking a lot about that on the show this week along with interviews with the castmates which i'm really excited about now moving on to summer house they have started filming season nine right now and they're already like three weeks into filming now Lindsay, of course obviously pregnant and she made a post this week that uh, she revealed the sex of the baby. It is female and her Instagram cat female. Why does, I'm so sorry. It's a girl. I don't know why I say, I'm so sorry. I've been now, I've been chastised for saying female. I got to get away from that. I don't know why I say that. Um, the caption is, this was truly the most special moment of my pregnancy. My boyfriend found out the gender first and then revealed it to me in the sweetest way while we were traveling in Europe. We left Milan on June 9th and took a car to, uh, anyways, he organized ahead of time for the hotel to set up our room with flowers and balloons to surprise me when we walked in. It's hard to surprise me, but not only did he pull it off, he crushed it. We couldn't be more excited that our little cub is a baby girl. My favorite part of this, th that Lindsay said he crushed it because Carl, remember, he was not crushing life. And her boyfriend, like the the use of the word crushing it or crushed it is hysterical. By the way, I wanted to go PS, I will give this man a hug voluntarily. No, just everything, everything she does is so funny. Like even when they had their like crackers, like the cheese its and the whatever, her shade is like the perfect amount of humor, perfect amount of shade that it like hits it every time. I love her. I mean, I, I love her more the post breakup. Like I don't <laughs> I don't know. Does everyone feel that way? <laughs> No, I don't think everybody feels that way. I love her. I mean, I really genuinely love her. And I like, I, I tend to go towards people that have always been who they've been. And that yeah. doesn't mean that they don't have work to do on themselves or whatever. That's not my business. And we'll see, you know, I was just talking about loving Bethany before. And now look where that's gotten. I right. take it on a year by year basis, you know, like we'll see how it goes. But I love Lindsay, you know, I really do. Um, it'll be interesting to though, uh, I mean, and also this is Sunday and I said this like last week or a couple weeks ago, this is the time where I always wonder about their car ride back from the Hamptons. Like who's hung over, who's in a fight, how long is it going to take to get back to the city? And, you know, West and, you know, we have West and Jesse Solomon and now Carl who's single as well. And I wonder, I wonder if any of the guys have brought girls back yet, because you know, their egos have got to be on fire after being like pulled into the celebrity bravo sphere and we saw it with west but like are they just hooking up non-stop right now i don't know but and i don't know if i'm allowed to say this but yeah, one can. of my <laughs> um so I, well i won't name this part but one of my followers um i did tea time and she said so she's a bravo account i can tell you separately and you can ask her if you need to use it for permission um she was posting something like about Carl sucking or whatever. And then he went oh. to DMs. Are you, are, is this blocked by Jax? No. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Um, here, I'll tell you and you can cut it out. If wait, wait, wait. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me pause it really quick. If he's like dropping oh, into people. She told me that he potentially slid into the DMs of somebody. We'll see. I don't know about any of that. But I, I thought blocked by Jax because she did something. Like you guys, you'll do tea time on yours. And she had to pick people walking in if they had sexual ex People DM her if they had sexual experiences with Bravo celebrities. And right. Like, and by the way, remember, anybody can say anything or they can just make up things. But there was a lot of people that had Schwartz during the during the engagement and the marriage. Like there was like 10 or 15 people that were like, oh, yeah, I made out with Schwartz while he was engaged or while he was married at this bar. Like I was like, damn. <laughs> okay. And I, I want to know how many people were with Jax because that has to be insane. But that reminds me of Jax saying that he had 
um, sex with um, Brandy. And Brandy was like, absolutely not. Yeah. And the <laughs> thing is about Brandy is I feel like, she, but she's not a liar. You know, like, I feel like Brandy, I don't know. You tell me, what do you No, think? no, no. So what we, sh- we talked about this last week, I think last Monday, you guys, is that there was like a Reddit thread or something about Jax having hooked up or admitting he hooked up with Ramona Singer and Brandy Glanville. Then Brandy tweeted, I would never hook up with, I've never had sex with man or hooked up with this man. Now I would tend to believe Brandy on that because, you know, she's not doing really great anyway. So it would be kind of probably maybe advantageous if she leaned into that rumor a little bit more and she shut it down. And it also, but also I believe half the things that people say out there are usually there's a grain of truth in there, but the most of the surrounding bullshit is false. I truly believe he hooked up with Ramona back in the day, but also I want to believe that like, that's part of it. I want in my heart, I want to believe that happened. So I more have a tendency to believe that because I want to believe that the Brandy thing I think would be even more difficult just because she was friends with Lisa Vanderpump. It was in all of that circle. And I think it would have come out by now. That was the first time I had heard the Brandy thing. Yeah, but I feel like Brandy would be more of his type. When I think about him hooking up with um, Ramona, Ramona, I just feel like, I don't know, they're both just such like hard, difficult characters. I know Brandy is too, but like, I just feel like there would be fighting. There would be, I just don't know if there would be any spark there. She, she likes yeah. her guys older anyway. <laughs> Well, we, but we have photographic evidence that Jax has at least hung out with Ramona three times because yeah. I have three separate photo shoots of them together at parties, which I have memorized in my horrible head. And oh, I, you know, so, I so I, I could totally, but also I could totally see Jax, them both being tipsy and being like, yeah, why not? Why not? Let's right. do it. She's like tired of like the three guys in New York that everyone hooks up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tired of Harry Dubin. Uh, let's let's uh, switch it to Jack. So uh, speaking of Jack's, they started filming The Valley season two this past week. We had a white party on Friday night. Uh, if you were on their Instagrams, you saw that. We'll see what the storylines are. I know they are on a media hold right now, so I can't you know, talk to any of them on the show. And there's a reason why I know that. So I I also, I agree with that. I I think the show, like, I don't want to know a lot about, like, it'll come out in certain ways, but I don't want to like, I don't want to pull those out or give anything away because I still like to be surprised as a viewer too. No, I agree. And I definitely, we saw this with Vanderpump where people were talking about stuff on podcasts all leading up to, by the time we saw the episode, even though a lot of times it wasn't exactly as they said that it was going to be, I was like, we kind of already felt this or they're like, Oh, coming up is going to be, you know, you know, that, that one party where people got into a fight or whatever. And I'm, you're just now anticipating it. I don't know. I didn't like it. No, I don't. I don't love that. Every storyline now on a Bravo show has to do with an Instagram post or a podcast. Those are the two big things. Like even uh, Dubai now has fallen into that, which by the way, you guys, Real Housewives of Dubai, really good. This past week's episode is a classic Housewives episode. You're only seven episodes in. So I really do recommend it. Like if you put the time in, it gets really, really good. It airs on Tuesday night. So I wanted to throw that out there before we leave. Um, but yeah, I, I'm kind of tired too of like, I want to get, I wanted to get, get it back to like personal dynamics in the moment and not, you said this on Instagram two months ago and it really right. upset me. And by the way, you see these people are genuinely, there's a lot of toxicity going around. So they're always self-producing in a, in a way that they're probably not even cognizant of which is hysterical like you you think a month and a half ago was dramatic with like jacks bringing that busty girl to his bar he's still doing crazy things like don't worry he's going to keep doing stupid things do you think that it's possible or in something that they could look into that they have it written in their contract that they cannot tweet dm talk not maybe not dm whatever they can't post anything on social media about any of their castmates whatsoever until oh i would I would love that so much. And I don't think, I mean, first off, I know they're strongly like suggested not to, but all of these people are like, F that I'm going to do it anyways. Like they just, but like they're, they're rebels, you know, they're like, screw that. I'm going to do yeah, that. Yeah, but what if you dock their pay? Like for every, like, see, I would love this, you, you're going to lose uh, $4,000. You know, if you make $20,000 an episode, that's almost what, that's a fifth of your earnings. 
Well, imagine yeah. that though, but like it's gotten so out of hand. Like Jersey started, you know, involving like a Twitter accounts in like narratives and things. And I think once it gets to that point, it's like game over. Like I'm not there to watch a show about Twitter users. I'm not there to watch a show about myself. I want to know how these ladies feel about each other and where they are, whether it be a sisterhood like oh, we yeah. see with Love Island or a complete disaster like we see with Jersey, but let it be on them and no other kind of truly outside forces in terms of Bravo fans. I agree. I agree. And maybe they should just go for every tweet or every post that you do or every podcast that you do that you talk about this during this time after filming, you know, whatever, do whatever you want, like after it's aired, whatever you want. But during that time, you can't and we you will lose pay. I and would love I would love Dana, that would be so. And by the way, that would be a fun segment on Watch What Happens Live of who got docked pay that week. Yes, of like Jax Taylor got docked $10,000 this week Ooh. because he said it would be great. Oh, and also like, then you could use it strategically be like, this is gonna be my one like I'm so this is so worth losing $10,000 for like, I'm gonna go on this podcast. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. It, it was like, more. <laughs> Jax is like raising GoFundMe money just so he can blast Dodie, you know? Um, <laughs> okay, a couple of quick hits. Uh, I know we're not really watching the Kardashians this season, but I still dip in. Uh, Kim had a bathroom accident and got the tip of her finger sliced off or like messed up. And they showed her, uh, you know, her recovery and she's in a hyperbaric chamber. And I just thought how Kim must have saw, uh, so, like saw her celebrity life just pass before her eyes because <laughs> any part of Kim's face or body is part of the reason why she's a billionaire. Like that's the money maker, or that's how it started. So I wonder truly how flippin' scared she was. And she was yelling at one of her kids because they were eating chips after eight 30, which is a classic mom scenario. But like, just imagine she was like, yeah, all of a sudden I'm seeing bone in my finger. And then I was like, Oh my God, we need that little fingertip that can go with like the Smithsonian or something. Right. But I'm dying that she has a hyperbaric chamber because that does help speed um, healing like after surgery. And most plastic surgeons I know don't have it because it's so expensive. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. Oftentimes it'll be facial plastic surgeons that do actually Dr. Rodman has um, one. And so I'm like, girl, I feel like you just told on yourself because if plastic surgeons don't have this, why do you have one? Why do you have this well i know why <laughs> when the kardashians do doctor scenes now the doctors have are always at their mansions like yeah. they must have like a surgery recovery room in all of their houses because mm -hmm. always the doctor like chris had like a whole hysterectomy thing. And the doctor was like there in a room at Chris's house. Kim has the hyperbaric chamber and the doctor's like, have you found the time? You know, like, are you in there, you know, daily in the hyperbaric chamber? And she's like, who has the time? And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Kim, who has the time to go into your personal hyperbaric chamber? Oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, she did it after every surgery. She's talked about having her own, like all these lasers and stuff in her house. Like she basically has a med spa in her house, which is another thing why it's so wild to me. That people believe that she doesn't have surgery, her whole sperm, um, salmon sperm facial. And I'm like, Oh yeah, this, this person will put sperm in micro or get it injected. I don't even think like put on her face, but injected into her face. But oh, a nose job, that is out of the question. That is too weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, by the way, if I if you have the money, go for it. I know Paris Hilton has a little med spa in her place as well, uh, yeah. which is amazing. Okay, a couple quick hits to get us out of here. This is ridiculous and it just made me laugh. Jojo Siwa reveals plans for triplets with three different surrogates. And she says, because I'm gay, I have planned to pre I have, I have to plan a pregnancy much different than a straight person. I actually want to take three eggs, fertilize three eggs, have three sur surrogates. So technically they'll all be from the same batch, but they will all be born separately. And then she said, she's already named them. And the baby girl would be named Freddie and the twin boys would be named Eddie and Teddy. Okay. Well, this is how I know that she hasn't actually spoken to a doctor because putting one egg in three separate women you you there's a highly a high likelihood of losing all of those eggs usually they put two to three in one person hoping that one or two survives you know like jojo you okay. have just been debunked by at I ig famous by dana i mean you know or the other thing is she could she could have a kid she's if she gets a sperm maybe not salmon sperm but a different type of sperm <laughs> just well, I'm, have I'm, a kid. I'm, I'm, yeah I've been impregnated by Kim Kardashian's salmon sperm facial. Um, no, <laughs> it's I'm, a very I'm, expensive I'm, baby. 
I'm all for her having kids and all this stuff. But what cracks me up is it's always like, she just seems to be saying some wacky things in the press in hopes of people like me or E weekly, like picking up on it. But the part where I was like dipping out was like, I will name the baby girl, Freddie and the boys, Eddie and Teddy. And then I was like, I'm out dude, Freddie, Eddie and Teddy. No, no, thank you. I am not ready for Freddie, Eddie and Teddy. No. Done. Honestly, I thought when you said that she was going to have three surrogates, so they're going to be born like three separate women. But I thought you were going to say that, but they're going to be technically triplets. I'm like assuming that <laughs> they get born. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't know, are you going to do slaver? You going to do you know that? That's where I thought you were going with that. I was like, oh no, no. science has failed her. No, but uh, good luck, Jojo. We uh, we can't wait to see you be a mother. Also, Chet Hanks, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson's son, he's going to be on MTV's new season of The Surreal Life that starts this week. And it has Kim Zolziak on there and supposedly they get flirty. Chet Hanks, if you don't know, he's like, he's been around social media now for a couple of years. He, uh, he invent, you know, like he's, he's wild. He's admittedly had a cocaine uh, issue in the past that he's conquered, but this was great in the daily mail. It says Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson banned son Chet from starring on reality TV before he signed uh, up for surreal life. And he said before that his parents were in complete, like, no, no, never do reality television. We won't allow you to do reality television. And then the surreal life came about and they were a okay with that. And I was like, how the fuck would they turn down any, what reality television shows were, was he being offered that they said no? Because the surreal life is pretty flipping wacky. It's not like Survivor no. or Amazing Race. It's an insane reality show. So I don't know how Tom Hanks would be like, that sounds awesome, son. We're real proud. I wonder if they were like, you need to get a real job. Like you need to talk to this director. You need to get a real acting job. And then they were probably like, you know what? You know what? If this is, if this is what he's got, like, Zal's agent can bring him. <laughs> yeah, we we wanted better for Chet, but we, really, we uh, really, we're going to allow him to do reality. Like, we, you know, we maybe an Academy Award was like too lofty of a goal, but we at least felt like maybe like a recurring guest spot on a popular TV show. But you know, maybe that's too much for our son. Dude, I want I I would love if Chet Hanks went on the Valley. I would love it. I mean, he really is a character. You just got to find the right place to put him in. Um, but he's you know a celebrity kid. But I, I like watching him. And also, uh, Sex in the City or and just like that, they're filming their new season right now. And there was a rumor this week that Kim Cattrall was going to be in every episode of this season, but she was not going to be in the scenes. With, with Carrie, Sarah. with Sarah Jessica Parker. And that has yeah. now been debunked. Kim Cattrall went on Twitter to say, ah, very funny, but no, I will not be doing this. And I was really disappointed. I was too. There is no Sex in the City without her. I mean, and it was a little before my time, but I did watch all the, you know, reruns or whatever. But the older I get, the more I completely do not understand Carrie and... um Big. So Samantha and Miranda are the ones I'm like, I get it. The working and the like, I don't really give a fuck about these guys type situation. Yeah. But uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, Carrie and Tra original trad wife. What's her name? Charlotte. Original so, trad wife. <laughs> original trad wife. The, the further, like the older I get, the more I'm like, this is, this is not, mm -mm, no, no, thank you. <laughs> Oh, listen, I consider it like a, a child wife. <laughs> it's, it's like star Wars to me. Like, I don't believe like, it's like, ah, oh, it's fun. It's a fun place to visit. And I'm bummed that we, we no longer have, um, uh, Hope or Samantha? no, oh. Che, uh, Che Diaz is gone. Oh yeah. Hey, Hey, it's Che. So anyway, so uh, Kim Cattrall won't be there, but I did also think it would be funny if she was there and they had to do full scenes with neither of them in the same room. That would have added kind of an extra like layer of his, like, insanity to that knowing that they hate each other so much and they're forced to be on this show together it's kind of like sandoval and ariana well i was gonna say also like rachel and sheena during the reunion <laughs> oh my god did you see rachel the other day said she missed sheena stop no she did she went on her podcast and said she misses certain castmates like sheena and summer moon um so okay. yeah and Wait, do you think Tom Sandoval, like now, do you think they'll try to get Tom Sandoval to do an episode of The Valley about the Kristen Doty comment? Like, I was wondering, because now Vanderpump Rules, we don't know when that's going to, like, this is like new drama that happened this weekend. Do you think there's any world in which they will try to convince or Sandoval beg to get on to one episode of The Valley? I'm sure he's begged to get on it anyway, just in general, as I'm sure Lala, you know, all of them. I'm, I'm sure after this season, they were all like defecting, like, please take us. Can 
we're older now anyway. Like we're moving into the valley. Please take us. I feel like that conversation was being had with every single cast member um, of the original cast. But the, I, I feel like they would be really stupid to bring Sandoval on. I don't do. What do you think? Well, I mean, the only reason I think maybe also it's another like a, a little bit of a possibility is now producer Jeremiah from Vanderpump has now moved over to the Valley on season two. He wasn't the producer on season one, but has been moved over. So he does have that relationship because Jeremiah has been with that show since season one, episode one. So yes. that he does have a lot of relationships in that gang. So I would be curious, like never say never, but I don't think it's needed and I don't think it's wanted but you never know where they're going to look for content. I mean, Lala had her baby monsoon this week. I don't know if that was covered on the Valley, you know, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I don't know. I guess if it was one little bit of an episode and they put Sandoval on, it'd be one thing, but like if they made him like a friend of, I, I would just, it would continue that trying too hard to make fetch happen, you know, trying too hard yeah. to make Sandoval yeah, yeah. happen and be like, we clearly don't want him on our screens. This is, this is how I want to see Tom Sandoval on the show. Okay. The gang of the Valley walks into Starbucks and they walk up to the counter and Sandoval's like, what's up? Welcome to Starbucks. Can I take your order, please? That's where I want to see Tom Sandoval. That would be amazing. That would be hilarious actually. Okay. Or if he like uh, showed up to the, oh, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> if he showed up where? If he showed up where? If he showed up to like one of their, like a casting, like call for like someone's like new, like clothing line or whatever. And he like shows up as the model, you know, like how we saw him way back when for yes. like the Hills. He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, on a, in, he's in the same chair with his shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Gotta go back to the beginning. <laughs> Uh, well, this was a blast. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for your patience this morning with me. And you guys at IG famous by Dana is the account. Go follow it. You probably already do because she's already, you know, insane amount of followers, but there's always room for more in her group of people, her friends and family of IG famous by Dana land. And remember Tuesday is going to be a big announcement that you are guys are going to want to be a part of. So go check that out over there. Any new watch parties coming up, anything else planned? No, I've been such a bad Bravo fan. I need to figure out the next like really great show. I mean, the well, show you, that see, you found Love Island. You love Island, and then I have a Bravo show. I think. Yeah, but love love, I think Love Island is Bravo in a sense to me because it's Peacock, which is so entwined. But I did say this week, Bravo should have been smart, and once Love Island started taking off, they should have moved it to Bravo five six nights a week. Yeah. That'd have been amazing, but yeah. here we are. <laughs> well, by the way, I mean, you're not what your new show, but I mean, is your personal life? You, you maybe let's just say you're focusing on the season of your personal life and making sure it's the best that it can possibly be. I am. There's a lot of things coming that I'm excited about. Um, mainly just really awesome surgeons that I'm working with. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff excites me. I mean, I don't know. Now I'm going to look into I, more of like Kim Kardashian's hyperbaric chamber. I'm going to make a post about that. I can't yeah, you got to, man. You go. Yeah. But I, I got to say too, if you ever, uh, a surgeon, it doesn't even have to be a good one. If they're like, Hey, we're looking for a schlubby dude to just like do like practice on consider recommending me. Just like, <laughs> Hey, we're looking to like, just try some things out. We don't know if we'll be good at it or not. I'm willing to put myself in there for science. <sighs> But the surgeons I work with are amazing and you, you no, don't I have to worry about anything. But if there's anything that you're kind of thinking of, we can talk about this, you know, another time and maybe, maybe we'll find a fit for you. Yeah. I want to get a blaff. I want to do all the, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't even know if that's a term. Okay. <laughs> At IG famous by Dana. Dana, thank you. This was a blast. Thanks, Ryan.